Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today we are going to find the easy way to paint 3D stackable door hangers. All right, the very first thing we need to know about these 3D stacker door hangers is that all the little pieces come separately. So you want to take off the pieces. They'll be securely wrapped and attached when you get them. I love that we do these with laser because you don't have to do any sanding. You don't have to do any positioning. And if you want a freestyle, you can flip it over and put your design on the back. So say you don't want your leaves in those positions, that kind of thing. Um, so you can make it your own either way works. These are etched so that they have just barely aligned so they're not going to show up and they're also etched so that they're skinnier than the pieces you'll put on top so they won't show. All right, we need to know about what we're gonna paint with. Um, we're gonna paint our background with just a foam applicator, but when we get to our letters um, and our pieces, if I use like a makeup applicator or a sponge brush, what's going to happen is I'm going to bend over the tip or the edges of the letters and the elements and so if that happens, then what is gonna happen for your piece is you're gonna end up with a mess. And if you don't want to have to paint every edge of every letter, you wanna keep your project as clean as possible. The way we're going to do that is we're gonna use a jumbo dauber. Well, we're gonna use some jumbo daubers. When we change colors, we'll have to switch and ink sweepers. These are super dense and they don't cup over the edges of the letters and I'll show you how that works. If you're gonna be hanging this on your door, it's a good idea to seal your pieces and um, I would use a matte, um, a matte spray. This is a Krylon 1311 matte finish. Just spray everything, put it on a piece of cardboard, put it in a well-ventilated area, follow your instructions on the can and um, give everything a nice good seal and that way your elements will be protected from the elements. And then this is what you'll use for your top coat as well. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna base coat the background. So after sealing, um, we're gonna mix 22 with 27 and these numbers do not refer to any order of paint, but it refers to the 80 colors that we paint with. And this is a color chart that you can purchase and it is, um, it is deco work colors and Sherwin-William colors. So if you buy things in bulk in Sherwin-Williams, you know what color it is and what to ask for. And then also in deco art, you'll know what bottle that is. Handy little chart to have. Okay, so then we're gonna take equal parts of these two colors. When you're mixing colors, always mix a little bit extra so that you don't have to match your paint colors together. Oops, that's not quite equal. Okay, then we take our offset handle um, paint palette spatula and we mix them together. No water in any of these brushes and all these things that we do today, we're not going to use water with our paint. Um, dry paint will behave much better. Um, to keep the edges of your surface clean, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna sweep off and lift as you're sweeping. And then as I go around, I will make sure I'm pulling towards myself and lifting off. And use scant paint. If you use scant paint, it will dry quicker. So this is all about how to paint this project the easy way. So I'm gonna give you some tips to make that be easy. And then you always wanna keep your paint going in the same direction. You don't wanna go like all over unless you're going for an all over effect. Now we'll turn our board over so we get a good effect on the opposite side. You notice that some of the etching is catching some of the paint. That's exactly what we intended for it to do. So you're gonna have an essence of where to put your pieces, but you're not gonna be like um, marks on there, like it won't be really strong. All right, I've got my base coat on and I've got my brush in water. If you're curious about how to clean your brushes, you'll want to check out our video on how to clean your brushes. Um, make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when we have new videos. We are always putting out content that makes painting easy and DIY simple. All right, we're ready to show you the secrets of how to get the base coat on these letters without making a mess. I'm going to use my jumbo dauber. I'm going to use it dry and I'm going to load my paint like right smack in the middle. 
and then smoosh it on my palette. Smooshing is a technical term. And then I'm going to offload on my paper towel. Okay, so I'd rather do no mess on these letters and have to do two coats than to have to clean up. So this is very important. So I'm gonna go straight up and down. Super easy, you could almost close your eyes. When I'm painting little pieces like this, I like to put them on a paper towel because they won't slide around. I can easily move my paper towel to position everything. That makes the letters and all the little bits super simple to paint. Now I'm gonna take my dirty orange and I'm gonna go into number 18 so that I get an orangey red. It's almost like a brush mix, but it's really not mixing. We're just pressing it on there, smooshing. I'm gonna go back into my dauber. I'm going to press the red paint out. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my orange, press it out, offload. And while this is still wet, I'm gonna highlight the middle of the leaf. And because it's still wet, it will kind of blend its way out. If you don't like something, maybe that didn't blend enough, press that out, load into your red, and blend. All right, now we're gonna take number eight paint color and a little bit of paint. This doesn't take a lot of paint, it doesn't take a lot of time, and it's really quite simple. So I love projects like this where you can have a really good quality DIY thing and just have it all come together very easily. I'm going to do the whole leaf in the yellow and then I'm gonna use a green to accent the center. I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute and I'm gonna put my dauber right down on top of my smooshing spot so that it can um, be stay wet while I'm waiting for that to dry. I don't wanna lift the yellow off. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a blue. To not keep everything too simple, but this is kind of liberating. If you don't have exact paint colors, feel free to mix your own. That's um, one of the reasons that these um, paint chip charts are so valuable is that you can look for colors that are similar and then play around with mixing. I'm gonna take number 11 and number 49. And I'm going to just mix those together. I want a kind of dusty blue. Okay, and then we're going to get into our jumbo daubers. And actually, you know what, because these letters are so skinny, um, I think I'm gonna go into an ink sweeper because they're so nice and long and narrow. It'll just make basing them faster and easier. So that takes up almost the whole side of the letter. You hang on to the letters because they tend to kind of suction to your dauber. Don't be pushing too hard. You don't want the paint to go around the edges. Okay, so now we'll pick up our yellow, get our green out so that we can work in real time so we get a good blend. I need like just a dot of that color. You could also do this with a dome brush and pick up your green, scumble away all of your color, offload it. And you could go right in the middle of here and you could just feather that Okay, so that's one way that you can do that. The way I'm gonna do it today is we're gonna use the yellow and we're gonna wet in wet blend. Put that down, pick up green, blah, blah, blah. And then right up the middle. Perfect. In the water and in the water. And we have one more piece left and then we're going to share how we get it all put together. We're gonna to use number 12 color. Just a kind of neat mushroomy brown. And then we'll just go along the edges. I love the ink sweeper for this because it just makes short work of this big circle.
All right, I can decide if I want to do another coat. I kind of like the little bit of irregularity of it. It looks a little weathered, so I'm going to leave it right there. All right, I'm going to give this a little bit of distressing with my sandpaper. It's a number 60 grit sandpaper, and this is a sanding block, and we will put an affiliate link to this product from Amazon. Okay, this is like indispensable if you are DIY. You want a sanding block. Always sand with the grain of the wood or with the direction of your brush strokes. Now I'm gonna try to get this distressing right at the edges. Brush off all of the schmutz and we're ready to apply. Um, the beauty of these pieces is they are laser cut so they're gonna be perfect and um, so easy to deal with. They are very gentle and very delicate so when you're playing around with these pieces, make sure that you're being gentle with them until they are secured. Okay, secret glue weapon. This is quick and dry, quick dry tacky glue by Aileen. And this is an amazing little product. Um, doesn't seem to be able to be knocked off in heat or in cold. It seems to really secure, so we really like this product. So we're gonna open the lid. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with our circle. Gonna do a little dry run. Let's get glasses. This is very like lining up stencils. Okay, so I like that. I'm gonna flip it straight over. I'm gonna put little bits of glue on the thicker areas. You wanna use a little bit of glue. Don't overdo it because it'll make a mess. Always put your cap back on so that you don't um, dry out your, your applicator. Okay, so then we flip him over. Get your glasses. And line him up. Now you're gonna see that I get just a little bit of schlop here and there where things ooze out. So you wanna ap apply that nice and evenly. And then you're gonna take a um, Q-tip um, or the edge of your paper towel and clean that up.